Awesome. Thank you, Kira. I'm bummed that the music is ending, uh, but thank you all so, so much for joining us tonight for our Women in Enterprise Sales Forum. Thrilled to have you all here with us. Uh, so by way of introduction, my name is Jessica Lynn. I'm a, a co-founder and investor at Workbench uh, and an enterprise VC fund here in New York City, along with my colleagues, Kira and Priyanka. Uh, we live and breathe enterprise software. We invest in enterprise software startups throughout the country um, at the C2 stage, and, and we always love talking to early stage uh, startups, so please send them our way. Uh, but for some context on tonight's event, so here at Workbench, we've been extremely passionate about women in enterprise, um, or women enterprise, as I like to call it, uh, for the past seven years. Uh, for those of you who have joined uh, some of our other women and enterprise events in the past, it really came from me selfishly wanting to connect with other uh, women in the space because it honestly at times felt lonely. Um, so we started to bring together this amazing community of women across founders and operators um, and execs. Uh, Kira, if you wanna go to the next slide with different lunches and workshops and meetups uh, and more. Um, and then it really hit peak uh, in 2018 when we hosted our first ever Women in Enterprise Summit. You can see here, um, back with Salesforce Ventures. Um, we had over 250 women in the space, as you can see, it was like the most women we've ever had. Um, and speakers from Slack and Bank of America and New Relic and the Assistant Mayor of New York. And, and it was so, so awesome. So we're hoping uh, to bring it back later this year. So, so stay tuned for that. It was amazing. Uh, in the meantime, though, we are hosting these quarterly Women in Enterprise Sales Forums as Lolita. And the genesis of tonight's event was inspired largely by two awesome women in sales, Stacey Schmidt and Elisa Rubenstein, who are ex account execs and SDRs at Catalyst, one of our workbench portfolio companies. Um, and we were talking about this topic about uh, how does one be successful transitioning from an SDR to account and exec um, and all the different learnings it takes to be successful on that journey. So um, this is a topic I, I care so much about. How do we continue growing all of you, um, the awesome women in our community? How do we keep scaling and rising you all up as enterprise sales leaders? So that's really um, our, our top goal for tonight. One is to hear from four amazing women in enterprise sales for an honest and, and tactical conversation on their journeys from SDR to AE. Um, plenty of time for questions from everyone. So please, please throw your questions into chat directly and, and we'll, we'll, we'll um, pick them up. And then lastly, we're, we're gonna leave some time at the end just for smaller breakout uh, groups for you all to connect with one another. Um, we know that's just as important too. So with that, I'd love to turn it over to Stacy, who will be moderating um, and to talk a little bit about Catalyst, our partner tonight, and to kick us off. Awesome. Thank you for the intro, Jess. Super excited to be here. Um, yeah, like Jess said, I am a senior account executive at Catalyst. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I love to see that, Elena, you said you, whoever you are, you just bought Catalyst. Love that. Um, we are a customer success platform, arguably, I think the best customer success platform out there. We are taking a bit more modern approach um, and we're really starting to focus on, obviously, this group is all sales, but I think we could probably all admit if we look at the, the tools that our customer success teams are using, probably none, maybe spreadsheets, maybe Salesforce. And so a, a huge market and a really exciting space to be in. Um, and yeah, we are hiring SDRs, we're hiring AEs, we're hiring head of sales. So please reach out to either myself or Elisa if you'd love to uh, kind of start the interview process with us, we'd love to see that. So in terms of kicking off this event today, um, we have women from Dialpad, Gong and Product Board who uh, have taken the time to meet with all of us. So would love to kick it off if everyone could go through. Uh, Amy, we can start with you and just go down the list. Um, a quick intro on yourself and the, the icebreaker that we agreed on. Uh, what is your superpower? Awesome. Hi, I'm Amy. Um, I am a strategic uh, account executive over at Dialpad. I've been at Dialpad for almost three years now, but I've been in sales for um, almost 10 years. Uh, and I, of course, started out as an SDR. Um, uh, way back when, when I first started in tech sales, I actually worked for BlueJeans, which is was a Zoom competitor. I was like the 50th employee and like 10th salesperson overall. So that was, it's been a wild ride. And, and um, 
yeah, my, my superpower, um, which we clarified was not a, like a, a superpower, if you could choose one, but like what superpower do I actually have in real life? Um, I can find anything on sale. Like I will never pay full price anything on sale. And I challenge you, don't send me like a Chanel bag, but uh, send me anything and I'll find it for you on sale. Um. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a really good one. And I feel like you're probably going to get more people reaching out to you than, uh, than you're looking for, but awesome. Thanks for joining Amy. Uh, Jen, if you want to go next. Yeah. Oh, or Jenny, sorry, this is going to be confusing. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Sure, I can go. So I'm Jenny Jacob from Product Board. Product Board is a platform for product managers um, to help them decide what to build next, prioritize, and, and build roadmaps for also hiring, which is super exciting. Um, but my sales career started just shy of four years ago. I started my career initially in finance, um, so pretty different. Played that role out for a little bit after college for a year or so at JP Morgan. Wasn't a good fit for me. And that's when I pivoted into sales, moved out to San Francisco. Um, my last company was Periscope Data that was since acquired or merged with SciSense, um, which is a much larger uh, company within the BI space. Um, there is where I was an SDR. Um, I then transitioned to Product Board, which we'll talk more about um, and pivoted to an account executive role. I initially started my career at product, uh, at product Board as a Velocity AE, which is essentially um, working with small business mid-market organizations. And now I've moved into an enterprise role. So working with a lot larger organizations, which has been a pretty exciting journey. My superpower, um, that's a great one, Amy. So I'm jealous of that. I'm, I'm probably gonna hit you up with some ideas of, of sales that I could find for myself. Um, my superpower is I don't get jet lagged, which we'll see if I'll be put to the test after COVID because I haven't traveled internationally in quite some time at this point, um, but I've felt pretty lucky to, to not experience it uh, in my travels in my lifetime. That is amazing. I feel like that mixed with like the picture that Jess shared of like real events and people in the office. I'm like, what is jet lag? What is travel? What is sitting next to each other without masks? So that's a good one. Um, and Jen, final, final person on the panel. Okay. And Jenny, I'm, I'm so jealous of that going from SF to New York. I, I, I experienced jet lag pretty badly for a while there. Um, but hi, my name is Jen Silvestri. I'm an account executive at Gong. And if you don't know what Gong is, it's a revenue intelligence platform. So as a salesperson, you can go back, essentially look at your, your game tape, what you said on the phone and, and improve and allow your managers to coach you from there. The way I started my career was actually as a CSM. And then I moved into an SDR role over at LinkedIn and then moved to my first account executive role at LinkedIn as well. And my superpower, um, I think I know a few thousand dog breeds out there. I'm one of those people that's at the dog park and I, I can name 90% of the dog breeds in there, even if it's a, a mix. Um, strange one, and I'm not sure if anyone would ever need that at any point, but I think that's my superpower. <laughs> I love that. I feel like I always like call them out on the street and my husband is like, how do you know any dog breed? I'm like, how do you not know? But <laughs> exactly. clearly I imagine you would have me beat because I don't know that many. Um, awesome. Well, I appreciate the intros. I love to hear that we have a, a bit of different backgrounds in terms of Amy, you've been in sales your entire career and some folks who have transitioned. So super excited. Um, hopefully we've got a lot of SDRs on the call today or folks who are managing SDRs or informally coaching them at your own companies. And I think as Jess called out, the goal is that these three women will, will share their experiences with us and hopefully we can all walk away uh, with some, some tactical learnings and takeaways to help the folks that we're working with today. So to kick things off, Jen, uh, we'll start with you. So as an AE now, if you think back to when you were an SDR, what was the, the number one thing you wish you would have known uh, before you became an AE? I think the biggest thing was to not put so much pressure on every single thing that you do as an SDR. Um, especially when you're starting off in sales, there's a lot of highs and a lot of lows and the ability to, to take everything with a grain of salt and to understand that it's a learning process and each mistake you make or each opportunity that's, that's closed lost, you're just learning something new and building a skill set to get to the next level. I think as an SDR, that's, that's really tough at first. A lot of us going into sales are, 
are competitive and we really want to do well and we want to better ourselves. But I think it was, it was a mentor that helped me understand that at some point. And that was something that I, I wish I had known from day one, it would have made things a, a little bit easier. Definitely. I think that's a great call out. I know I did not start in sales. And so for me, I'm relatively new ish to the space. And I think that's a great call out, whether you're an SDR an AE, like learning to like you win some, you lose some, obviously hoping you win more than more than you lose, but rolling with the punches and not getting too stressed out, whether you're trying to hit a number of meetings, a number of closed ones, whatever that might be. Um, thinking about kind of the along that same lines, Amy, Thinking back when you were an SDR, like what would you say is the the number one mistake you saw yourself making back then that, you know, if you were giving advice to folks here today that you would suggest they try not to do or try to avoid? Well, we don't have enough time to talk about probably all the mistakes that I made back then, because what I didn't say before is before I became an SDR, um, my first job in sales was actually selling wine to grocery stores. And like my job was selling my wine. So that was like in the front of the, um, the, uh, the end caps. I, I, I can't remember. I can't believe I even remember that word, but, um, and, and so when I was an SDR, um, and I worked for blue jeans and, and we were such a startup at the time, so small, they had absolutely no time to train us SDRs on anything. They basically just like, you know, threw us into it. And we were, there was, I think three or four of us at the time when I started out, we were just like throwing things against the wall and seeing if they stuck. Um, and so that all just to say, like we made so many mistakes, but really like the biggest thing I think about, um, cause I think often like, what would I change now that would have made me so much more successful so long ago when I knew nothing. It, it kind of goes along with what Jen said, like you really, um, someone once told me just control the controllables. You can't control everything. You're always gonna have bad days. Sales is such a roller coaster and you just have to ride it. Like it's okay if you have a bad day. It's okay if you have a great day. I actually like make it my ethos to never try to show emotion either way. Not, you know, because I don't think women should show emotion, but just because you could be on the highest high and then the next day on the lowest low. So it's just like always keep an even keel. Um, but the great part about sales is that you really control your destiny. So if you do have a bad day, you can put in, you know, 10x more work the next day and make up for it. Um, and if you have a great day, you can also still put in 10 X work the next day. Right. Um, that, yeah, I guess that would be my answer. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's super helpful. I'm curious thinking about the, you know, you were, you maybe didn't have the best training program. And I imagine a lot of folks here, especially those of us are at early stage startups. It's kind of that figure it out as you go. I'd be curious for all three of you to share and we can Jenny start with you. What would you suggest um, in terms of if you're an, a an SDR or even an AE who doesn't have a, a structured training program? Do you have any resources or suggestions on how to kind of train yourself in the absence of uh, pre-created training? Yeah, um, no, that's a great question because I found myself in that position when I joined Product Board. It was like, there weren't that many salespeople. There, weren't, there wasn't sales training built out and it was my first job in a closing role. Um, which is, is different than being an SDR, of course. So it's how can you train yourself as in addition to hopefully finding training materials or building them along the way with the team. Um, I think there, there are good resources out there for sure. Like one, just like a, a book that I've read that I'm sure other people have read or the Challenger Sale. I think also another book I've read is Happiness Advantage, which is just the po power of positive thinking and like putting that into your own performance. Um, and success, both in your personal life and your professional life. Um, but I think when you don't have formal trading built out, a lot of it is going to be leaning on your colleagues and leaning on your network to help coach you, to help train you, people who have been in those shoes and leaning on them, um, role playing with them, um, listening to a lot of phone calls that might be recorded and kind of testing it out with your colleagues to try and almost build up your own training collateral. Um, and listening to your own calls and just figuring out like, what did I do that was great on that call? What did I not do that so well that I don't want to repeat again? Um, so I think a lot of it is just leveraging your network and kind of cr creating your own training collateral when it's not there in front of you and pre-built. 
I think that's a great call out. I know something that I, when I joined Catalyst, we didn't have any SDRs and I've never been an SDR. So I really wasn't sure how to start building my own pipeline. And that idea of, I didn't have a network, I've worked in consulting. And so I purposely went and found SDRs on LinkedIn and just started following them, specifically ones that posted a lot. I know Jen Gong is like the best. So Sarah Brazer like followed her and just tried to see who she's calling yeah. out. And it was really helpful because if you find yourself starting as an SDR and you don't have a network, it's LinkedIn is a great way, which Jen, you've got LinkedIn and Gong, two of the best. It's a great way you can just try to do that on your own, um, which I found success with. I'm curious from your perspective, Jen, any other specific uh, ways that you would suggest folks kind of train themselves if they don't have a, a clear plan in place? Yeah, and to piggyback off of Jenny, I mean, shameless plug, the reason I came to Gong in the first place is because at LinkedIn, I learned so much of what I know in sales by listening to other people's calls, by listening to my own calls and growing and building skills from there. So if you can do that, if you have a platform to do that, definitely take advantage of it. And if not manually, try to do it yourself. Um, I think the other thing, and I actually started at Gong Remote, and there's a lot of times when you're sitting there and you're trying to get a question answered and trying to figure out what to do to either fix a problem or build a new skill. I don't know if a lot of people have run into this as well, but sometimes it's intimidating to ask someone that question and feel like you're bothering them. Um, that's something I run into a lot, but I think the best way to approach that is if you've ever had a younger colleague come to you and ask a question, you likely feel like the expert in that situation. And it's, it's a good feeling from your end. Wow. I actually, I know what I'm saying. I'm helping someone. Um, so that would be my piece of advice other than listening to calls and working towards that. The other piece is just that tactical way of, of finding a few people that you trust and, and feeling comfortable and you should feel confident in asking them questions because they want to help. I think that's a great call out. Piggybacking on that a little bit, Amy, I'm curious, you know, this idea of there's ways you can just hit your number and get promoted to AE, right? But I imagine everyone has someone that they leaned on or someone that they really look to for advice and kind of career coaching. How would you recommend someone go about doing that? Like who's the right person to help you get to AE? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think everyone is flattered when someone, or I can't say everyone, but most people are flattered when someone approaches you and says, I want to learn from you. I want to get where you are. It flattered me when, um, you know, I, I sent this uh, a webinar out to, uh, you know, the dial pad sales team Slack channel and a few of the SDRs or more junior uh, AEs were so excited and, and wanted to join and hear what I had to say. I was like, why does anyone want to hear what I have to say? But regardless, um, that, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit intimidating to specifically ask someone to be your mentor, but just put time on someone's calendar. Everyone has time now. We're not going anywhere, especially now, right? We're not going anywhere. We're working from home for the most part. Um, I think just like the way that you would approach prospecting, right? Approach someone who you want to learn from and do a little research first, make it personal, explain why. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that someone would, you know, want to help you. I actually think of myself and when I was an SDR almost 10 years ago at Blue Jeans, the AE um, who I looked up to the most, her name was Kirsten. She might actually be on right now. She, um, you know, we went our separate ways and she's actually now my director of sales at Dialpad by way of an acquisition from a couple months ago. So it's just crazy how it's all come full circle. But I remember being an AE or sorry, an SDR and seeing how she could command a room of IT guys. Cause right. We were selling to IT and it's a lot of men in that industry. Um, and thinking to myself, I want to, be an AE like Kirsten is. And um, I just would just always ask her, you know, whatever was on my mind. And she was always there to answer questions. She's helping me close what could be the biggest deal of my career right now. Um, and so, yeah, it just, it's full circle and, and just go for it, I guess. I love that. I love the call out of like, use your SDR skills to get what you want. They think you know how to prospect, you know how to get people's attention and you can use that in, in a lot of ways uh, in life, which is which is helpful. Jen or Jenny, from, from your perspective, outside of the, you know, there's the path, here's the things I have to do, check the boxes to move from SDR to AE, hit numbers. 
Is there anyone that you found uh, either specifically or in general, a specific role that was helpful in getting you to, to that jump from SDR to AE? Yeah, I, I have a somewhat similar story to, I guess, what Amy just shared around. Um, my current sales manager is, I was his SDR at my last company. Um, and so that's someone I leaned on heavily. Um, one, because I gravitated towards him while we were paired, but also like the way that he closed and kind of mandated within the meetings that he ran and worked with his customers, I really admired. Um, so that's someone I continued to lean on for career advice. And, and, but I think it goes beyond just checking the boxes, but also controlling like how you can improve to get you to an AE level, which is following more deals all the way through, right? Like not, it's not just about booking the meeting. Like if you're really trying to get to that next level is, okay, how can I follow this through all the way to the end to really understand everything that it takes to close a deal? Or how can I shadow you on forecasting calls or how you move through your forecasting process? Like there's a lot of things as an SDR, I didn't, I didn't realize that like take a lot of time um, to, to complete, whether it's admin tasks or even just types of conversations you have to have with different personas within a deal cycle. And so those are a lot of things that I think you can leverage teammates inside of sales, um, but also potentially like product folks within your organization or sales engineers to up-level your knowledge on what you're selling and making sure that you get ahead of other people that might be um, applying for the job and advocate for yourself and just really um, gain more knowledge in, in what AE's responsibilities are. Yeah, I think that's a, a great call out thinking of uh, the idea of like kind of start to act like the job you're trying to get, right? If you're trying to pivot into marketing, you're going to hang out with marketing folks. So if you're trying to become an AE, there is to your point, a lot of things that you may not even realize are happening as an SDR. And I think the idea of like following a deal all the way through is such a, a, a really good achievable goal for everybody, right? Any SDR can say like, hey, can I tag along? Can I attend these meetings all the way through? I wanna see uh, what this experience really is. And it's also helpful if, as an SDR to think about, do you really wanna be an AE? What does that actually look like? You can kind of follow along and learn that as well versus just saying, okay, I started as an SDR. I gotta stay on this track. This is where I'm going um, to see that through. Thinking about, uh, you know, obviously you're all you all moved from uh, SDR to AE. What do you think if you had to give advice to an SDR? Like, what is the most important thing for them to do today to become successful when they do move into an AE role? And sorry, Jen, we'll go go to you. <laughs> yeah, I I think the most successful piece is just being really intentional about your time. Um, as an SDR, you have a million things to balance, whether it's a combination of inbound, outbound, very personalized messaging, mass messaging, your qualification calls, setting meetings. I think one of the most important things is just being really intentional about your time and, and making sure that when you are being intentional and have that hour for X, Y, and Z, you're really working towards that and, and not distracted. Um, I think especially when you're stressed, we, we talked about the highs and lows. It's it's easy to stay or run awry and get off course. But if you carve out the time, you're really focused in certain areas. There are it's a metrics metrics driven role and that'll align to success. Yeah, it's a great call out. Amy or Jenny Jenny, anything on on that from your side? Yeah, I, I like very similar to what Jen said. I think my advice to an SDR would be that putting in the work and the time today will pay dividends when you become an AE because you will develop the skills and the habits that will just put you on track to, to build so much pipeline that you'll be closing deals left and right. And um, you'll, you'll become one of the star AEs if you keep up with those those habits and those skills because it's just in every sales org I've worked in it's very clear which AEs have been SDRs because they have those habits and those skills of prospecting um, and it's almost like a muscle that you just keep flexing. Absolutely. Yeah, I think as, as I mentioned like I was not an SDR before I became an AE in my first role I had no, I didn't even know what SDR stood for. And I 
didn't know how to outbound. I didn't know how to do it. And so I had to learn and I realized like being an AE and still being your SDR, doing your own prospecting is like invaluable, both as a muscle, but at the outcomes pay off as well. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Oh, I was just going to add to that too. Okay. Like I, I agree that the skills that you build as an SDR don't go, go away or you shouldn't let them go away because they're su su they're still super important. Like you're always still qualifying as you're progressing through deal, like something in opportunity through your life cycle. Right. So it's just, how can you um, continue to work on even qualification while you're an SDR and kind of stretch that um, and get even better at it, qualify for deeper pain, because that's really where you'll take it to the next level and be able to prove that you can be an account executive role. Um, and so a lot of what I did too, is how can I work with my AE? So I'm running more of the qualification calls or discovery calls when I'm doing that pass off. And I think that's an achievable, achievable way just to set a little bit more of a stretch goal for yourself um, while you're still in the SDR role. Absolutely. I think that's a great call out. I think a lot of times SDRs think about, okay, should I stay where I'm at and get promoted and like work through it? Or should I jump ship and try to move from SDR to AE by leaving, going from one company to another? Jenny, you mentioned that, you know, you moved from SciSense to product board and you got to, you experienced that, right? SDR to Velocity AE and now Enterprise AE. Can you share a little bit around your experience doing that? Is that, you know, why, why did you end up in that position? Is that what you would recommend or would mm -hmm. love to know more? Yeah, uh, no, it's a great question. Honestly, it was a really hard decision for me. Um, I, and I know that a lot of it varies, right? It's, what is the current headcount for your sales organization where you're in today? What are the openings look like? It really is like a personal decision too. Um, and the time you're willing to wait, right? Um, for my personal situation, um, I had been an SDR at uh, Periscope, now SciSense for a year and change, I suppose. And they had some openings for an account executive. So I was actually up for the account executive role at SciSense. That did help me in giving me leverage for exploring additional account executive opportunities at other organizations. Um, so that the decision came down to um, once I had like a few um, the product board and the account executive role within Periscope data still at the time is, okay, where do I see more of the opportunity for growth? Um, why I chose product board is the opportunity size I saw was greater. Um, again, nothing against Periscope data, nothing against SciSense, but it was a smaller organization. It was more exciting to me. And I thought I would be stretched even further um, in that opportunity rather than staying in an organization that did have defined processes, um, did have things very structured. Um, and so that's how I made the jump to a different, or, or why I made the jump to a different organization. Um, but again, I think it comes back to what is really like the, the the year or so look like ahead? Like, do you think that you'll be able to stay where you are and it's worth it because you love the company, you love the culture and it's worth the wait? Or do you want to go and explore other opportunities elsewhere? Um, but really, again, just be the advocate for yourself because I think that does add more challenge to those conversations of, hey, why should we hire you as an account executive when you have no closing experience at this new company that you also no know nothing about? So I think just being prepared to talk about that as well in the interview process is, is key. Absolutely. Amy or Jen, from your perspective, if, you, you know, if you're thinking about SDRs that you're working with today, how would you approach that conversation? If your SDRs are like, hey, I really wanna make AE, do you have any advice for them in terms of like stay versus search elsewhere? Yeah, I, I actually just started working with a new SDR in the last few months, and she's brand new to being an SDR. She might be on here. Hi, Fiona, if you are. Um, and uh, it's, it's clear that, right, almost every SDR wants to get promoted as soon as possible. And um, I, I, I believe me and her had this conversation a couple of weeks ago. Um, stay for at least six months. Uh, not not meaning the company, but like stay in the SDR role for at least six months. And my reasoning is kind of exactly, you know, my answer to the last question, which was the skills and habits that you learn as an SDR will pay dividends for you when you are an AE and will set you up for success. And the worst thing you could do is jump too quickly when you're not ready and put yourself in a, in a situation or a scenario where um, you're unhappy. And then maybe you have to make another move. And so patience is really key in being an SDR. Now, 
I didn't take that advice myself. I, you know, moved from SDR to AE at Blue Jeans within like four months, but it was within the same company. It all worked out. But looking back, I would have waited a little bit longer. Jess has a question in the, the chat that I think very much aligns with that, the, the kind of the pains and the, the learning. Jen, uh, what would you say, you know, thinking about I'm an SDR, I want to become an AE, the biggest difference is closing, right? You're actually closing new business. How would you help your SDR or what advice would you give to an SDR to really make sure that they're preparing to be ready to, to do that, actually close new business? Yeah, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. As an as an SDR, you're you're the first touch point, and there's a whole lot that goes on after that first touch point. And just being able to zoom out and just give context of this is what else happens in a deal cycle, and these are the specific skills that we need to strengthen in order to get to that point. Whether that's deeper discovery or even the other pieces, just being able to adjust between different parts of the deal cycle. When you go from one call to another, sometimes as an account executive, you're needing to adapt from an initial outbound discovery call to all of a sudden a closing call with a contact you've been working with for a year. So I think just taking that perspective of zooming out and understanding there's a lot of different skills that go into the role not that they can't start working on all of those different skills, but just just showing that the adaptability and there's a lot of different areas that go into it. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that very much, I think Jenny, maybe you called it out, I can't remember now who said it, but like that idea of like following deals all the way through the cycle, right? Like that, Jen, to your point is one of the ways you'll be able to realize, oh, there is so much more that happens after this meeting has been set up and how can I make sure that I'm not surprised by any of those things once I am in the role uh, acting in that way. In terms of thinking about, uh, you know, you're all AEs, so you've moved from SDR to AE. What advice would you give an SDR if they came to you and asked, you know, hey, I'm, I don't know if I want to be an AE. Is this the right move for me? Should I pivot entirely? Should I be try to become an SDR manager? Jenny, from your perspective, any any thoughts on that? How would you kind of coach someone through that? The, the what's next after SDR? Yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, I've always, in my experience, like I think a good question to ask yourself is: there's of course like that individual contributor path, or there's more of like a management path. And so I think. There, there are things you can think about that will um, kind of sway you towards a management path, right? Where it's if you like working with people, you like managing with people, you like talking more about um, group process versus an individual contributor that's more, at the end of the day, like your success depends on yourself um, and if that drives you. And I think that's a good indicator if you can kind of pinpoint, okay, what path do I see myself on? Um, that's a good conversation to have. Now, the other thing to it is being an SDR and exploring either of those paths, like you, you most likely have both of those resources close to you. So I think having very candid conversations with your current SDR manager and a current AE will be very, very insightful to help you understand like what it could look like in their shoes, maybe do a little bit of shadowing, but be very transparent if you're not sure, right? I don't think it does anyone good if you're just pretend that you definitely wanna do what they're doing because um, they might be able to shed like some light on, oh, I was in that same position and this is why I chose this path. Um, so I think a lot of it's also just being transparent about like the options you are exploring to really uncover what might be the best match for you. Yeah, I think that very much ties back to the idea of like use your network as well, right? Like not only are you probably in a situation where you're close to the people and the types of roles you want to be get into, but look out, look outside your organization as well and leverage LinkedIn, try to ask, hey, can I grab 15, 20 minutes with you? Use your prospecting skills to, <laughs> to, to network. Um, Amy, from, from your point of view, you've been in sales, I think the longest of, of all of us. Have, did you always know you wanted to be an AE? Did you, have you ever thought about jumping ship uh, when and why, if yes? Yes, actually, it's so funny because like a year ago, I had told my boyfriend, I am done with sales. I'm out. Like, I just, I can't do sales anymore. It's too, just like, it, it's just too much. And now I am not bragging, but my fiscal year ends tomorrow and I'm 
probably going to end the year at like 450%, right? Oh, wow. And it's just like that pushing, sure. well, I'm waiting on one, one final deal, but um, <laughs> so don't clap for me yet. But um, <laughs> it's, and also as an SDR, I was lured by a CSM manager at the time to potentially go the CSM route instead of becoming an AE. So, um, and, and I was talked out of it by a VP of sales at the time who just said, like, I, I just can see there's a natural sales instinct in you. You should stick with this. You know, you, you're, you shouldn't go the CSM route. You are a closer. And thankfully, I, um, I, I trusted him and I believed in him. But it's like, it's, it's, it's hard to stay motivated, especially like selling software for 10 years almost and um, selling, you know, cloud for the last like six. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm in sales because I get to make my own schedule. It's flexible. I get to talk to people and, and actually make real relationships with people, um, not in a BS way, like actual friends with some of my prospects and customers. Um, and you, I said this before, you can control your own destiny. Um, I worked really hard this year. And honestly, last year, some of these deals I've been working on for years now, um, and there, it's, it's finally coming to fruition. And so, um, yes, I've thought about straying, but like instinctively inside me, I'm a salesperson. I think I've been like selling, you know, a Barbie to my mom or that I wanted a Barbie, you know, since I was little. So it's, it's inside you sometimes. It's just intrinsic. I love that. And hopefully your mom was like, no, Amy, only if it's on sale and you learned at a young age, you're, <laughs> you're super proud. And you know what? <laughs> I'll say one more thing too, just because this is my, my I, years ago, when I first started out as an AE, I read something um, that this woman wrote about why women are, um, are, are so good at, at sales and specifically like enterprise sales and software sales. And one of the things she said has always stuck with me. And it was that I ask a lot of questions because Cosmopolitan Magazine taught me how, right? Like <laughs> answering the quizzes. And, and it's just so true, at least for me, I asked so many questions, just even annoyingly in my personal life. And, and that just like translates over. I love that. I love that. I love the idea even thinking of like, why do women make good salespeople? There's like the natural part of it, but then also like you, you just said, like, you know it, you're a closer and like unpacking that I think can make you an even better salesperson. If you really think about, okay, what's the deal cycle? What are the skills? What do I specifically have? What can I lean into? What can I, you know, make sure that I'm nurturing that don't come as naturally to me? Um, is a great call out and a good way to those days that I'm sure we all have where we're like, screw it, I'm out, I'm doing something else that you can remember. You're like, no, no, I do love this. And here's why I'm, I'm naturally uh, good at it. Tia had a, a great question that I imagine everyone, SDR or AE, hopefully you're still doing your prospecting, uh, would probably love to know the answer to. Uh, Jen, from, from your perspective, were there any specific outreach tactics that you would say helped you book the most meetings when you were an SDR? You know, I would say just being as, I mean, as cliche as it is being as personalized as possible, taking that extra moment to relate to that person specifically, not of course to their business, but to that person specifically. Um, I find that even when I'm doing outreach today, I'm looking at that person's profile, trying to get a better understanding of what's motivating them, even Googling them to see what else they do. Um, whether it's a lot of times these people have podcasts and there's a lot of stuff out there that they've published, or maybe if someone was prospecting me that I've been part of a, a women in enterprise sales forum and mentioning something along those lines, I think that going that one step further and adding a little bit of personalization, it, it shows results. It really, really does. And if that's the time of taking three personalized messages versus five unpersonalized, if I can get two, one to two meetings out of that, it's, it's definitely worth it. Absolutely. Uh, Jenny or Amy, what about from your perspective, what would you say your, your SDR superpower would be? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that also comes back to always have a reason for why you're reaching out um, so that it's more compelling for who you're reaching out to. Um, a lot of that comes back to what you just said, Jen, around like, who is that person understanding more of what you could make that why be in your email or outreach? Um, and then the other thing is also just leading with the problem that they might be facing rather than just coming across as like, here's my solution, right? Like 
they'll they'll react better to because you're acknowledging the, the problems or challenges that it might be experiencing and that'll pique their interest and then coming through with like the solution so i think leading with the problems that they might be experiencing is, is definitely a way, always proven successful too and that's i think you know jen jenny tying those two together it's like the 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 problem you're trying to solve is probably similar if not exactly the same for everyone you're reaching out to so when you've got that that can be your kind of rinse and repeat and then layering that in with some personal personalization helps you kind of get more personalization at scale yep (laughs) amy what about you any tips and tricks things that work the most you became uh an ae in four months so how did you do it (laughs) um well, back then we thought we invented, and back then, like it was that, I mean, 10 years, I guess it was kind of a long time ago, but we thought we invented the mail merge because outreach and yesware, or it was yesware at the time, but outreach didn't exist yet. And so we would take like a, a Microsoft Word and hello in, in you know, uh, uh, parentheses name, and it would fill in the name. And we weren't being personalized at all. We were spraying and praying. And now that's like so taboo. But at the time we got so many meetings because um, none of us knew about it and we hadn't been doing it before. And um, so that's like a bad example, right? Because now it's all about personalization and being, you know, super specific. Um, But there's a a training by a man called John Barrows. I think uh, he took it from some, well, he licensed it from someone else. And a lot of people license it under different names. It's called Why You, Why You Now. Um, and I, you know, learned that maybe eight years ago, I still use it to this day. It's just like a framework for reaching out to someone in a very personal and specific way. But all that to say, you know, what Jen and Jenny said is exactly right. Be specific, have intention, um, and also be a human rather than, you know, sending a spray and pray mail merge. Absolutely. Uh, but I love that. That feels like such a throwback to now something that we've like come full circle and people are like, you can't just do that. You're not going to book any meetings. Um, any last questions from the group that you want to throw into the chat before we head into the breakout rooms? Otherwise, Kira, I think we're, we're good to go. Any last words from, from the panelists, things you'd like to share to the aspiring AEs?